with your kids. Hola, Niha, Kunichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Mahaba, Moni Muli Wanji, Namaste, Jambo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast, an iHeartRadio Best Kids and Family Podcast Award nominee. We are so grateful that you're part of our beautiful Reading with Your Kids family. Joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find us on the iHeartRadio app on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Tanisha J. Ray. She is here to celebrate Danny Dutterhuff plays with dolls. Before we invite Tanisha into the studio, we want to let you know we have some fantastic guests coming up. Here on the Reading With Your Kids podcast, of course, tomorrow, June 19th, 2021, is our special Juneteenth episode of the show. We're so excited to welcome back Karen Parsons, Dr. Michael Waters, Malcolm Mitchell, all for our Juneteenth episode. Dr. Jamila Khan will be here uh, speaking about her memoir. Also, Dr. Regine Moranian is going to be answering questions sent in by our parents how we can best help our kids deal with the anxiety they may be feeling with the reopening after the pandemic. And later on in the month, you are going to meet somebody named Desmond is amazing. And this guest really is amazing. And you don't want to miss a minute. So why don't you go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, and sign up for our free newsletter. And also, Please be sure to subscribe to the show and connect with us on social media, facebook.com slash reading with your kids, at Jedly Magic on Twitter, at Reading With Your Kids on Instagram, and also be sure to check out our Reading With Your Kids page on Pinterest. Join us right now from the heart of the desert, Tucson, Arizona. Our guest is here to celebrate the publication of her debut picture book, it's called Danny Dutterhuff Plays with Dolls. Please welcome to the show, Tanisha Ray. Tanisha, welcome to the Reading with Your Kids podcast. Thank you, Deadly. It's great to be here. Really happy that you're here. I, we, I guess the first place to start is the title. That I, I, I imagine a lot of eyebrows are raised when they read Danny Dutterhuff Plays with Dolls. Can you tell us about this book? Absolutely. Uh, Danny Dutterhoff Plays with Dolls is a picture book about a young boy who brings a doll to school and is immediately confronted by classroom bullies who clearly and publicly tell him the rule, which is girls can play with boy toys, but boys cannot play with girl toys. And he's devastated and scared. So instead of bringing the doll to show and tell the next day, he decides to bring in a more appropriate boy toy until his older brother Marcus teaches him three magic words that change his life forever. Well, I'm going to see if I can get those magic words out of you in a minute. But, you know, you're right. As I was preparing for this interview, um, I was kind of looking back at my life. Now, granted, I'm almost 100 years old, so things were very different when I was a kid. But still, it was okay for girls to come out and and play with we we thought it was great. My cousin Darlene was the best athlete in the neighborhood. Now, granted, there were some places where she wasn't allowed to play because she was a girl. But as far as we were concerned, she could pick up a bat and a hockey stick and play with us. And yeah, the, the, lots of girls would come over and play with our games and our toys. But there, I don't think I remember anybody at least publicly picking up a doll. Yes. Um, girls, we have our own challenges, definitely, and barriers that we're still working on um, to, to burst through. But a boy playing with a doll, it's not new, but it is still controversial. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started thinking about writing this story, um, I could have taken it two different ways. One is to have the boy play with the doll, but that's not the central conflict. He just happens to be playing with the doll in the story and it's very subtle. The other is the approach that I took, which is different, but not better, just different, where the doll was the source of conflict. Um, and I did that because it happens. I've seen it, I've watched it, um, especially in my childhood. 
and I've seen it while my children were growing up. And I just wanted to do a story that um, could speak to not only just young boys, uh, but anybody to say that it's okay to be who you are. It's scary, especially when it's not tolerated or accepted in your environment, but it's okay. And I see you and I hear you and let's go. Yeah. And you know one of the crazy things, you know, we're talking about dolls. And yes. yes, it's not okay for guys to play with dolls. But the reality is guys play with dolls. They just call them action figures. Yes. You know, and it's – and I remember when I, I did have a G.I. Joe, and I remember my dad saying, you, you're you not supposed to play with dolls. I'm like, it's not a doll. It's an action figure. It says so on the box. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? I mean, it's, you just call something, something different and it's like, oh, well, absolutely. You're right. Uh, it, 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 it's, uh, you know, uh, it's not a doll anymore. So that makes it okay. Yes. And Danny doesn't have that, uh, that guy's a, oh, it's an action figure. Mm -hmm. He's, he's playing with a Barbie, sure. a Barbie type doll. So, um, it's definitely considered feminine. But what I loved in this story is his older brother, Marcus, who's in high school, what he does with Danny is he takes him on a walk and he introduces him or he points out the premier athletes who are um, in this story, they're black male athletes. And he says, that guy over there, he plays football, he's a football star, but he used to take ballet. He quit because he was made fun of. And that basketball star over there, he actually knits at home. He even knit Danny's Christmas hat, but he doesn't want people to know, so we keep it a secret. So in that story, his brother saying, people are complicated. And what we consider feminine or masculine, let's just, let's try to find a way to be yourself and be authentic. So he ends up telling his younger brother, uh, boys can, uh, play football and take ballet. Boys can dunk in mid hats, and boys can play with dolls. So it's it's okay. Yeah. Now you uh, mentioned earlier that that Danny's older brother told him three magic words. Did did you just sneak those in there? Sneak them by me? <laughs> no. Uh, the magic words that Marcus tells Danny uh, there are three sets of three. So just be yourself. I love you, no matter what. They're simple yet transformative words that any child, adolescent, or adult not only wants to hear but needs to hear. I love that, that I love you, just be yourself. Yes. Yeah, so very important. But it's something that kids don't, don't hear enough, and it's something that I think some kids don't hear at all. I think... I agree with you. I agree with you. And that is one of the beautiful things about storytelling, especially picture books. Um, we live in a very busy modern lifestyle. And especially with the pandemic, life is uncertain and it's stressful. The beautiful thing about a picture book is it's a perfect, brilliant medium for families to connect, for uh, families to sit down together and read stories about topics that extend not only beyond their front door, but their communities, and also to spark discussions. And picture books have this wonderful way of being able to say things to your children that you don't have time to say, that you forgot to say, that you don't know how to say, that you want to say. And it's a way for you to have that intimate connection in a very short period of time that can last a lifetime. You know, you're, you're absolutely right. There are so many things that we need to tell our kids and we need to remember to tell our kids. And sometimes there's really simple things like just be yourself. I love you no matter what. It's, it, and to, and to have a book that kind of reminds us because we all have reminders. We have planners. I have my phone beeps off when I have to pay a bill or gets, get, you know, get on Zoom to, to interview an author. You know, um, it, it would be really kind of great if we had an app that, that said, uh, tell your kid you love them. Hell, you know, it's 815. But I think the picture books are better because it's it's a, a more natural way to do it. And I think as you're reading the books together with your kids, that 
that the endorphins kind of go off and you just get feel that wave of love go over you and relax and chill and it's you know I was telling you about my nephew earlier and I remember reading with him and just uh, you know it was long before I was a dad and just kind of wrap my eye arms around him and going you know I love you and it just was natural it was real and he heard it and he believed it it's it's powerful because just like you mentioned um biologically we're hardwired for connection and attachment um humans are the only species on the planet that's dependent upon a caregiver for a long period of time so it's really a survival thing mm-hmm. um biologically we need somebody who will actually look into our eyes and say i'm here no matter what i'm not going anywhere you're going to change but my love isn't going to change i'm always going to be here and it's a biological need that every human being has yeah you know you you just mentioned again something i love you no matter what that's those is su- that's such an important sentence um i know i've shared here on on the podcast there was uh, a couple of moments in my kids life at different times when they're in different ages the one that stands out the most is when my daughter was ready to go out on stage for a solo at a dance competition. It's something that she had worked for really hard, and some people try to keep it away from her, and and she fought through it, and, and there was a lot of obstacles, but she she did it all, and she got it together, and she was there. And right before she went on, she just had this meltdown. And, you know, my wife and I both took her and just said, look, you can go out there, you can win, you can go out there and, and, and fall on your face. You can decide not to go out there. It doesn't matter. We're going to love you anyways. That's so powerful. That is that is the story, right? So uh, I write, uh, generally, I write sci-fi and fantasy. So every book I've written besides this one has a dragon because I love dragons. <laughs> But Danny, to me, has his own set of dragons that he has to deal with. Um, He's a young five-year-old black male, lives in a single-parent home, headed headed by his mother, doesn't know his father from a low-income family. And what I love is that he has these challenges. He doesn't just experience challenges. His life is challenging. And just like DreamWorks, How to Train Your Dragon, it's so powerful to see someone learn how to make those what we consider barriers work in their favor mm. and to propel them forward. And so they not only survive, but they thrive. And for me, there's nothing more poignant than seeing that five-year-old little scrawny boy stand up in front of his class and say, this is my doll. She's my best friend. And I know what you say, I know you're going to laugh and it hurts my feelings, but I'm going to be myself anyway. And that to me is slaying that dragon, just like your daughter did. That is, that image is so inspiring. And I'm imagining, uh, you know, a, a little five-year-old, four-year-old, whether a boy or a girl, reading that with their parents and seeing that courage up on stage. Talk about an, an inspirational character. Where did the the inspiration for Danny in this story come from? Danny came from a collection of experiences I had when I was a child, when I was raising my own children. But primarily it came from an experience that I witnessed when I was in my childhood of just this young boy struggling to be who he is, expressing who he is, and having those negative consequences, and me feeling powerless in my situation to do something and be more supportive and I can't go back in time but I can definitely pay it forward so Danny was created uh for that purpose to be that force you know you're you kind and and again you know when I first received your, your first um email talking about Danny and it reminded me of a moment in 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 my life when um I've been presenting educational magic shows at schools for 30 years. And since 2003, the uh, the topic that, that schools have wanted me to address most of all is, is the topic of bullying. Mm-hmm. And probably around 2003, 2005, after my performance, a, a teacher came up to me and uh, 
tell me I did a great show, but but ex- sharing with me an experience that his son had, and where his son is very like Danny, went away to summer camp, and he brought his teddy bear. Well, he was ten or eleven years old, and when he got to sleepaway camp with his teddy bear, he he was bullied, and you know the dad was expressing, telling me the story, and and. You know, saying it's really too bad. I feel so bad for my son. Now, I sympathized with him and gave him some suggestions of, of what his son can do. I feel guilty because in the back of my mind, I was thinking, what were you thinking about? Letting your kid take a teddy bear to, to sleep away camp. What did you expect that was going to happen? Which was an honest and a kind of a real reaction. I'm glad I didn't verbalize it. But I feel guilty because... I should have known. We all should know that that teddy bear was a thing, you know, and it, it, it shouldn't have been given more power and it shouldn't have been been something that that caused other people to think less of this kid. Yes, I'm glad you brought up that story and your reaction to that story, because that's a, a very strong parental reaction. Um, and one of the reasons why I gave Danny those specific life circumstances was because especially when you're considered marginalized um, your culture and your family can be very rigid about expected behavior because they're like you're already going through this anyways Mm -hmm. why would you make a choice to add more harm and it's negative attention than you really need to Um, why are you setting yourself up for that right Um, so in the beginning of the story of Danny Dutterhouse plays with dolls his brother notices a neighbor staring at Danny playing with dolls on the front porch. So Marcus comes up with a, a story saying, play inside, it's magic. So play with dolls inside. So when show and tell comes up, Danny knows he shouldn't play. He was told not to play with his dogs outside, but he decides to sneak her out anyways. And that's when our conflict begins. But we do, we do have to remember, and I have to remind myself, I'm guilty of this as well, that what we consider protection can be sending our children messages that are detrimental to their self-esteem and their uh, sense of self-worth. And that's a gentle reminder that I also have to remind myself as well. Yeah. Are there other circumstances that, that you can think of? Cause it's not just guys shouldn't play with dolls, but there, there are a lot of different messages that, that we give kids kind of without thinking that, yeah, this may be good advice for 99% of the kids out there, but my kid is different, and maybe I need to be giving my kid a different message. Absolutely. Um, again, there's that, that hesitation, right? Um, because we don't want our children to experience pain or hurt, and we already see the identifiers. We know the markers. We see the writing on the road. I, I just want you to avoid that. You don't need... There are other things that are unavoidable. Let's avoid the avoidable. Mm -hmm. Um, I honestly believe that our children are more resilient than we give them credit for. And our reactions take that weight. And the world is going to have an opinion about certain things, absolutely. But nobody is more important. No opinion matters more to our children than our own. So if we tell our child, hey, this is going to be the response or this is the response you have, but I support you. Just like Marcus said, just be yourself. I love you no matter what. Yeah. Easier said than done. Definitely. Yeah. You know, it, it's really funny. And one of the things I love about being the host of this, this podcast is that it gives me the opportunity to see how dumb I am sometimes. And, you know, we talk I, and, and I've gone on and on on this program about Parents needing to allow their kids to fall down, let your kids fail, let your kids pick themselves up, help them be resilient. Don't try to bubble wrap them. They're going to they're gonna lose. They're going to have their feelings hurt. They need to grow from that. But again, you know, I never was able to kind of see it in, in this kind of circumstance. It's like, yeah, sometimes... When our kids are different, we need to be there and support them, but also support them to be themselves and know that uh, this this might be making your life tougher, kid, but I'm still going to be here for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, 
again, I really understand that, um, not on an intellectual level, but I feel it myself. I had to go through that with my own children. Um, one day my son came home and he said, mom, I'm going to apply for, to be the student council president. And I need to come up with a speech because tomorrow, tomorrow's the day. I need to have a speech by tomorrow. And I'm going to be honest here. My first thought was, what are you thinking? Do you want to be the secretary or the treasurer, maybe? Um, who's making the choice? And he said, oh, the kids are deciding. The kids are deciding. Because um, my son had um, certain challenges that he was going through. And I'm like, why are you going to do this to yourself? And that was my first response. Okay. And he said, mom, it'll be fine. This is what I want to do. I'm going for president. Okay. So we went over the speech. We didn't have a lot of time. Um, but he said, this is what he was going to do. He went out the next day. I just hoped that everything would go well. Okay. And then, um, he came home and he said, Hey mom, guess what? I'm like, what happened? He said, I'm the president. I got it. <laughs> and <laughs> It just, it was such a huge lesson, right? And I said, I'll never do that again. And I did. I did it again and again, because <laughs> you still have that protective feeling that, but honestly, I really had to learn, and this book really helped me reinforce that we can justify some of the most hurtful things to our children under that umbrella of protection. Mm-hmm. Um, we just need to have faith in them, have faith in ourselves advocate for change that's going to create a positive life, not for them, but for, for all children and show up when they need us at the end of the day, show up. Yeah. And at the end of the story, Marcus actually shows up in class for Danny. Danny has no idea he's going to be there. That's the, that's the beautiful thing about that scene is the little boy walks up there knee shaking with his doll and he stands up there and he, he gives his speech and he has no idea his brother's going to be there. And he looks in the back of the room and he sees Marcus sitting there to support him. And I think we just need to have resilient, capable kids and let's support them. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, you, you just shared something and I, and, and I don't know if you picked up on it, um, but obviously there's another hero in the story and Marcus is absolutely a hero. And it's, I think that this, you know, when you, when you're reading Danny Dutterhuff plays with dolls for the fifth or the sixth time with your kids, maybe a great thing to point out to your kids is that, yeah, um, Danny didn't have a dad. Marcus didn't have a dad, but Marcus kind of stepped in there and played the role of dad for Danny. And that's a pretty heroic thing. And that's a pretty beautiful thing. And yeah, you might not have a grandfather. You might have not, not have an uncle or an, uh, an aunt, um, or you might not have one of your parents living with you, but there are other people in your life that love you that can fill those roles. Well, that's beautiful what you said. And that's absolutely true. And that's what he serves. Um, and that's actually the topic of the next book in the series, which is going to come out, um, in June. It's about uh, Danny dealing with not having his father on Father's Day um, and focusing on that issue of, do you have love in your life, mm-hmm. right? Um, and Marcus is definitely, um, he's my hero because he responds to situations that I really, really wish that I had, and I'm aiming to do so in the future. Yeah, well... I'm really excited that you're able to, to create this really beautiful story. Talk about, you know, thought provoking. I think, uh, you know, I think this is going to get a lot of parents thinking. Um, and you, you know, if, if you you don't have a child, boy child that is looking to play with a doll in your family, especially now, chances are that there's going to be a kid in your, in your kid's classroom. That wants to play with, a, a, um, I don't know, the, the politically correct way to say it, but but with a toy that's not th- thought of to be appropriate for for that person, and this would be a great way for you to talk to your kids about that and to encourage your kids to have understanding and empathy for those kids who make those choices. Absolutely, um, and also to have empathy for themselves mm. as well. I think. Um, the dedication that I had for the book was to the person you would be if you gave yourself permission 
So it's really also just about um, trying to be comfortable with who you are and being tolerant of other people and having empathy and compassion for people who are discovering who they are, revealing who they are. Uh, we're all in this together and um, life is going to give you enough challenges. Let's not add yeah. onto that. Yeah. Well, I'm really happy that you are discovering that in addition to being a middle grade author and a sci-fi and fantasy author, you are also a great picture book author. Uh, was this a surprise for you? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, especially when you write epic fantasy, there's a lot of world building. It's really intricate and a lot of complexity and detail. So it's challenging writing picture books because you have to have an entire story um, fully fleshed out and about under a thousand words. So this was a challenge for me that I so glad that I decided to take and work through and finish and complete. And it's absolutely changed my life. Well, that is wonderful. I know people are going to want to know where to go to find out more about uh, Danny Dutterhuff plays with dolls and to learn more about Tanisha J. Ray. Danny Dutterhuff Plays with Dolls, among other online sites, is available on Amazon. And please check out TanishaJRay.com to not only learn about Danny, but the other books and what's to come. Yeah. Well, we've had a great time uh, with the first visit of our guest, because I have a feeling that she's going to be back, and we're really looking forward to it. We've been talking to the author of Danny Dutterhuff Plays with Dolls, a really thought-provoking picture book that you might want to add to your family library. And we've been speaking with the author, Tanisha J. Ray. Tanisha, thanks so much for being on the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Thank you so much, Jenny, for having me. It was an absolute pleasure. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. It's our Juneteenth celebration. Dr. Michael Waters will be with us. Karen Parsons. Malcolm Mitchell, and so much more. Join Justina Thompson and I as we celebrate Juneteenth. That's the next episode of the show. If you're the author of a fantastic children's book, we would love to have you as a guest on the podcast. Being a guest, it's fun, it's easy, it gives you the chance to tell thousands of people about your fantastic children's book, and it doesn't cost you a thing. No need to pay anybody to facilitate your visit to the show. All you need to do is to go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the Authors Click Here button at the top of the page. Scroll on down to be a guest. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, I want to start by thanking our guest, Tanisha J. Ray. Please be sure to check out Danny Dunahuff, Plays with Dolls. I also want to thank my amazing team, Alejandro Doherty, Fatima Khan, Justina Thompson, Helen Frazier, I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. I want to thank Audie the Doggy for having my back here in the studio. Most of all, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for joining us today. I want to thank you for connecting with us on social media, for, for letting your friends know all about us. But most of all, I want to thank you for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of The Reading With Your Kids Podcast.